is like an inflatable sculpture. I've seen anything like this before. today having a mooch about. from London fine got the train okay everything was good it's a really good trip to London actually that was two trips to London like there was the first one was the first part of the video and the second one was when I was showing you the car um, the electric the cool electric Renault car um, concept which yeah just amazing but shame it will never ever look like that so yeah stuff's been going on it's just been so busy so I'm just trying to piece together kind of bits of the vlog and stuff like that which um, I'd kind of filmed but not actually done anything with and it's like always a nightmare at the moment trying to work out you know what footage I've got and, and all this sort of stuff so anyway on the train I noticed there was a free wi-fi network and I haven't been on the train for ages so it's probably just like a normal thing now to have wi-fi on the train but I connected to it anyway um, and on the phone when you connect on the iPhone it actually says um, beware this is like an open network um, you know which is quite good because it gives you a little warning saying that. But I just joined the network anyway, just to see what it was like, see what the speed was like. And I was having a bit of trouble with it. It wasn't really working very well. So what I did was just like my kind of network mode just kind of stepped in and I was kind of thinking, I wonder what the, what the issue is or, you know, whatever. But um, so I decided to have a little poke around the network. I suppose this is usual for like an IT geek or whatever. Um, but anyway, I noticed it was completely open. And I could actually see like, loads of other um, clients. And it's quite worrying when you see this because you can actually see all the other users um, that are actually on the network. If you use an app like, I think it's called Thing on the iPhone and it basically just scans the network and shows you all the other people. And you can actually see a lot of like kind of named um, devices like people's names of their iPhone which is in my mind that's that's kind of really not that secure because most people call their iPhone like, a, like their name. Um, so you could see that when I was kind of scrolling through, you could see like certain people's names. Android seems to do it a little bit better. It just basically just disguises the the, um, the device under some sort of, I don't know, serial number or something like that. But anyway, I just thought I'd mention this because actually this is something that concerns me a little bit, like your kind of online security, um, you know, particularly with Wi-Fi networks. If you join a Wi-Fi network, um, whether it be like a hotel or like a coffee shop or anything that's basically free, or maybe even not free, maybe you've even paid for it. But certainly if you're in the habit of joining these networks and kind of, you know, doing everyday stuff like banking and, you know, sensitive things. And also, you know, you don't always know um, what your computer is doing behind the scenes. It could be kind of like checking email, and which it probably is, um, and probably loads of other things as well. Now, if, if somebody's sitting in the vicinity of that network, connected to that network, um, with an app like Wireshark or something like this, they can basically download all of the data from the whole network and save it in a file and then sift through it later and pick out the passwords and things like that that's sent in clear text, plain text. Probably not masses of apps actually do that these days, but certainly if you're on an open network, you know, you should be aware of these things. Also, an open wireless network is even worse because you don't actually need to be connected to the to the network to actually, you know, suck data off of that network you know you can use little devices like this they're just basically a little wi-fi um, interface with a kind of high gain antenna on the top and that basically just will pick up signals from anywhere now these can be used for like innocent purposes as well just like connecting to a wi-fi network that's a little bit too far away but if you see anyone lurking around in the shadows with something like that sticking out of their rucks up then yeah watch out now, I'm not trying to scare anyone or kind of say don't connect to these networks or whatever. It's just kind of being mindful of what you're actually doing when you're on those networks. Particularly like on Macs as well. Like if you're on a Mac computer um, and you've got like file sharing enabled, which I don't actually think it's enabled as standard, like by default out of the box. But if you've got that on because maybe you've got somebody else in the family with another Mac and you want to share things to, the, to that computer, it's a very easy way to, to do it. Although there is like AirDrop now, which is probably, probably a better way of doing it. 
um, but you can certainly notice this really obviously on the Mac. And anyone that kind of like, you know, frequents hotels and, and places like that, you will know what I'm talking about. You kind of plop your Mac down, connect it to the network, look down the side on the finder, and you'll actually see a bunch of other computers, you know. Now what's to say, like, one of those isn't a su something suspect and might actually you know, be trying to hack into your computer as you're speaking. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, you know, you might not necessarily know about, but it goes on. They're not trying to scare anyone. I think, you know, most of the device makers have actually got things pretty well covered now and the security is pretty kind of on point. Um, but there's always the risk of what you're actually doing, you know, outbound of your device, like what sites you're connecting to, things like that. Others will actually be able to see what you're doing if they can access the network and not necessarily if they're connected to that network, but if they can actually sniff the traffic from that network wirelessly using one of those things. So, so yeah, you've really got to watch what you're doing these days. I mean, ultimately, the best way to stay secure online, really, is to use your cellular connection, 3G or 4G. That is by far the most secure network. I mean, I say the most secure um, because that can still be hacked as well. But that is a little bit more complicated to um, to do and there'll be less people doing that right right now. <laughs> so yeah, if you're interested in this kind of thing, maybe you've found this video through searching for things like Wi-Fi hacking and stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's a massive amount of stuff online about this, like showing you even how to do it, um, you know, which is kind of scary in itself. But sometimes if you want to learn about how to be more security conscious, then you've actually got to exploit the security in the first place to, to kind of learn. We've all heard the stories of you know, how certain hackers are like employed by, you know, companies in the end because they'd rather have them on their side. So guys, that is it for Andy's little tech corner update thing. There is one more thing I want to show you actually before I go, and that is this. Now this is a really, really tiny mini PC. We've all seen mini PCs before, but this is slightly different. This is actually a full blown computer um, running Windows 10, and it's got a full keyboard on the bottom, two joysticks for sort of playing games, you've got um, a touch screen as well, like a um, 720p HD screen. It's pretty small, it's like 5.5 inch screen, um, but it's a touch screen. And then when you go inside, it's actually a full Windows desktop. So this is like, say computer, and it fits in the palm of your hand. So we're talking you can run full desktop applications. Now I first come across this a little while ago. Um, it's been around for a little while, this particular model. Um, but we're going to start doing them in the store as well. But this one is really interesting because it's actually, it's so tiny and it's not trying to be something that's competing with like a, you know, a very slim MacBook or something like that. And it can run Linux as well. So it can run Ubuntu alongside Windows. So you can basically flick between the OSs, which is just absolutely brilliant. Um, it boots so quick as well. It's got USB 3 on the back there. Now personally, I'm getting I'm getting a little bit bored with the whole kind of like standard phone and iPhone, you know, sort of setup. I feel like this has been around for so long and it needs innovation. And although this is kind of, you know, not really going in the same direction and it's it is bigger and um, still, I think this could be miniaturized even further to actually create, you know, an even smaller PC that actually fits in your pocket. Now whether it's running Windows or whether it's running um, you know, Linux or something like that, it's by the by, really. I mean, the experience I've had with Windows on this so far is actually very, very good. I'm very impressed with with, um, with Windows 10 so far. I mean, it's probably not up to the kind of you know level of, of Mac OS really, um, but it's certainly getting there. And there's actually some more exciting news because Windows 10 is going to be coming to ARM CPU soon, which means you're really going to be able to properly run run a Windows desktop on a phone. Now, I'm quite excited by that. Well, if you could get this device down to the thickness of just this screen and then just have a very, very slim keyboard fold out the front, I think you'd be onto something. Now, what's really impressive with this is that it's actually like a full version. This is Chrome here. So this is like a full version of Chrome. So Chrome desktop in the palm of your hand, which is pretty damn interesting. I mean, I know you can do this on a tablet, but you, you know, this is, this is something that's like that big. So you can actually have a proper desktop experience. Anyway guys, that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.